In today's show, we're going to talk about the Power Apps Coalesce co function. This should be a pretty quick video because I'm trying to slowly incorporate all the functions into a video, and this is one of the ones that I very rarely use, but I want to make sure you guys understood how it works, what you use it for, because it does have some cool uses. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. And today, we're going to dive into the Power Apps Coalesce function. And all this crazy little function does is it returns the first non-blank or empty string from a series of inputs you give it, which sounds really scary and complicated. And I'm not going to lie, I didn't know this function did for like the first two years that I used Power Apps. But I started using it and I realized that it's got some really helpful places. So I want to make this really quick video just to introduce you guys to how it works. So let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here on my desktop, we're just going to add a couple quick little pieces. The first one we're going to add is a text input and then we're going to add a label. And so if you watched one of my recent videos, we talked about formatting currency, right? And so we ended up doing something like this. We said text and then value and then text input one dot text. And then we formatted it like so. Doom, 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 doom. Like that, right? And that was our formula. And so then if we went up here and we had this blank and we set this to 12, it would show us $12, right? If we did 12, 35 or whatever that is, it formats, right? So we are doing currency, but someone pushed back and said, but Shane, when this is completely blank, I don't see anything. And I want to see uh, something I'm like, ah, oh, makes sense. So what the, we came up with on the fly or they came up with for themselves and I said would work just fine was they ended up going in here and doing an if, right? So they said, Hey, if, um, is blank and then text input one dot text. So if that's blank, then I just want to pass in a zero. And if it's not blank, then pass in whatever that function is. And so by doing that, you can see right away that when my text input is blank, I guess I could pull this down a little bit so they're not hidden. Then, um, so when that's blank, oh, power apps, text, there you go. So when they're blank, third time's charm, um, you get what you want, right? And so this works. The challenge with this is that, you know, it's, it's kind of complicated. I mean, it's not, it's easy, it, it logically makes sense, but there's a lot going on here. So one of the things that you can do if you find yourself writing these types of scenarios, because sometimes it's something as simple as is blank the text input. Other times though, you might be like is blank and then you went and looked up some data, right? And so you're like, oh, if that's blank, then use something else. If not, then look up the data again, right? So you're making duplicate calls and you can get yourself in these scenarios where you do a lot of extra work. So that's why they invented the coalesce function. So still another label down here. So the coalesce function, which, you know, is really weird. It always makes me feel like, you know, like I'm trying to like talk someone into something, I'm coalescing them, right? Cause that's what you're doing. You're coalescing the value. You're, you're massaging it. Um, but so here, what it does, it's going to return the first non-blank or empty string value. So like if I pass it in coalesce and then I give it, you know, that, which is an empty string and then something like this, high chewy, what you're going to see is that it returns high chewy. So this works great in scenarios where you don't want to have blanks incorporated because instead of right here where I just did, you know, hard coded it so you could see it, we could do something like this text input one dot text. And so as long as the text input is blank, it says hi Chewy. But if we go up here and say hi mom, then it switches to hi mom, right? Because when it evaluates this, it's like, Hey, is this thing blank or empty? It's not. Let me show you that. Oh, it is blank or empty. Then let me show you that. And I want you to keep in mind that we can make this is you can have as many inputs as you want. Maybe not as many, but I mean, you can have multiple. So we got text input to here. So we could change this to be, hey, if text input two is empty or is, has data, show it. If not, then check to see if text input two has text. And if not, finally say, show hi, Chewy. And so right now it shows hi, mom. But if we clear out text input one, it now shows it text input. We clear out that. It says hi, Chewy. We go back here and be like first one. And then now it shows again. So it is literally just going to show you the first field uh, or is going to return the first one that is blank or not blank. So you always want to make sure this last one down here is not going to be blank. Right? That's like your catch all. And one of the things I should have mentioned in the intro, but for you guys watching, you get to find out this same function exists in 
Power Automate flow expressions. And so we use that a lot over there because if you ever worked with flow, you know flow gets real grumpy if you pass it an empty string when it expects a string. So this is how we do a lot of that type of catching inside of flow. But this is not about flow, but just bonus temp. Okay, so now that you've kind of seen how that works, if we go back to our original example, so we know that this is a valid formula, but what we could have done here is we could have just got rid of this whole if thing and just said coalesce and then um, value text input, right? So, but if that comes back as blank, then coalesce in a zero. And so now we get the same effect if we put 55, 55 in here, it works, right? We get to format as currency, but when this one's blank, we're showing that 0.0, .0 which is really the question that the, uh, I wish I remember who asked. I have to go find their comment and tell them I made a video about what they asked. I didn't even plan to, but I just decided to this morning. Anyway, so that's coalesce. And keep in mind that this will work in, uh, you know, anywhere that you need a string. So I'm gonna go do a silly example, not a real example, but just to remind you how this works, right? So let's add a second screen. Blank, and let's throw a gallery in here real quick. And so in here, I've got my doggy data. Oh, look at all the cute pups. And so you could do a coalesce inside of a filter. Like I said, this example makes no sense, but it gives you an idea of, you know, what's possible. So you could say, you know, so if we do last name equals uh, Boswell, we should see uh, Adeline and Zoe. Yay, Zoe's pregnant. She's gonna have puppies very soon. Yay. So you can see that we have this capability. Um, but if you wanted right here, we could do something like coalesce and then, uh, you know, text input one dot text. And then if that's not there, then hard code them all to be young, which is chewy. And so coalesce would work inside filters would still be delegable because power apps is just passing whatever value. And so now if, like, if we go back over here and text input one and we put in, um, uh, who else? Uh, we'll just do Boswell again. No, we'll do Peter. That's the other one I was trying to think of. There we go. And so if we go back over here, now you see Max and Reese because those are the two Peter family dogs. So coalesce can be used a lot of clever ways. I don't know why you would do it that way, but it's one of those functions I don't use very often, but when I do need it, it saves my bacon. So there you go. So now you guys know about it. And that's it. Just a quick little function video, hopefully help you add something else to your toolbox, plant that little seed. Slowly but surely, I'm trying to hit all the functions because I just think that, you know, there's lots of little gold nuggets out there that you don't know what you don't know. And so my job is to help you know what you know. What you know? I, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, with that, I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you wanna work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all, I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out. Thanks and have a great day.